Some weeks ago, I was doing some experiments trying to uh, determine whether you could extend the frequency range of the analog discovery uh, above the 50 megahertz limit of the spectrum analyzer. And the reason that, of course, I wanted to do that was I was interested in uh, being able to use it for some experiments in the uh, in the 40 or 30 or 40 megahertz range but where you could also look at the second and third harmonics. So, of course, if you want to look at the third harmonic of 40 megahertz, you need to go out to about 120 megahertz. And the basic analog discovery with this uh, uh, PNC board is only 50 megahertz. So, as you may recall, I was using a mini circuits uh, mixer and uh, testing whether it would work and so on. Well, uh, I determined that it would work and I at that time said I probably would try to put together a prototype. So that's what I'm working on now. I have received uh, some parts that I ordered and I have made some changes to the design from the one I discussed in that uh, earlier video. One of the things is, I was thinking of using a 50 megahertz crystal and I've decided instead to use an 80 megahertz and that's what you see on the breadboard over here and then to divide that using a, a high-speed flip-flop down to 40 megahertz so that I could have basically two frequency ranges uh, in addition to the normal 0 to 50 of the uh, analog discovery that I would be able to get uh, a second range that basically would shift frequencies down by 40 megahertz. In other words, uh, 40 megahertz would be shifted down to uh, essentially zero. And so you would basically get a, a range from 40 to 90 megahertz. And then if you just use the 80 megahertz crystal directly without division, then you would get a, a range of from 80 megahertz to uh, 130 megahertz. So that is what I'm experimenting with here. At the time I also talked about using a Tough One mixer. I actually decided for reasons that I'll talk about when we talk about the circuit to use a Tough Three mixer which is a little different. It actually has a lower frequency range but its upper frequency is 400 megahertz uh, here is the uh, the Tough 3 spec sheet and you'll notice it's uh, the same level 7 mixer as a Tough 1 but it goes down to 150 kilohertz and it only goes up to 400 megahertz but given that I'm only interested in frequencies up to 120 megahertz this seemed like a more appropriate mixer I think it might be a dollar or two more than the Tough 1 but it, it's in the same price range one of the uh, nice things about it is it has a very low conversion loss. Notice 4.7 dB typical. Uh, so that's where I'm working now and what I've been doing is I have a 3 megahertz signal from the uh, signalant generator over there applied to the RFN of the, uh, of the mixer and then I'm using the 80 megahertz crystal directly but with the output uh, attenuated uh, about uh, 20 to 1. It's a 5 volt crystal so I'm attenuating it down to about 300 millivolts of input to the uh, the tough mixer. And up here is the uh, spectrum the center of the frequency band is 80 megahertz and then it's uh, a 10 megahertz span in other words plus or minus 5 and so what you can see is it's converting that uh, 3 megahertz to an 80 3 megahertz on the right and a 77 megahertz on the left now of course it's uh, it, it will look more when we get to the circuit as to exactly how we're going to implement this. But right now what I'm doing is more proof of concept that the Tough One or other Tough Three mixer with will work uh, well with the 80 megahertz uh, system and I'm basically doing a little bit of uh, analysis 
to sort of optimize the design, including things like uh, impedance matching and things of that sort. So uh, let me uh, show you in a minute what the uh, what the actual circuit's going to look like, and then we'll get started on trying to actually build one up and put it in a box and uh, test it out and so on. So here's the, C the uh, circuit that I came up with. It's a little bit different than what I proposed in part two of this sequence about uh, extending the analog discovery's frequency response. Instead of a 50 megahertz crystal, I decided to use an 80 megahertz. Uh, then I use a 74 LS74 to divide that down to 40 so that I can select between either a an 80 megahertz local oscillator or a 40 megahertz. Now the oscillator that I used is made by CTS. It's the MX045. It comes in two versions, one with and one without the three-state output or the uh, in output enable. It doesn't really matter which one you use. If you use the one with the output enable and you allow the output uh, enable to float, it works just like the one without the output enable. So unless you want to turn the oscillator on or off, it doesn't matter which one you get. Uh, I bought these from Mauser. They also come in a variety of other uh, frequencies. This is not a temperature stabilized oscillator and I didn't think for what uh, this was intended for that that was necessary. But if you want more precise uh, frequency control, you might want to consider a temperature controlled oscillator depending on your application. The mixer that I'm using is a mini circuits TUF3+. Plus. Now the TUF3 Plus is a 0.15 to 400 megahertz uh, mixer. I chose this one in part because of its lower conversion gain or conversion loss, since it's, an, uh, since it's a diode mixer, it has no gain. But part of the reason was I was studying the performance curves of this one versus the TUF1, and I decided to go with the TUF3 partly because of what happens when you use a, a little bit lower LO uh, level. And the reason I do that is I'm trying to minimize the spurious signals in the mixer. And we'll talk a little bit in a minute about uh, a couple of other things you might want to consider. But at any rate, the TUF3 appears to have slightly better intermodulation performance, not only based on these curves, but also based on some measurements that I made. So I'm using a TUF3. The, in order to reduce the 5 volt square wave that's present at the output of the flip-flop or the output of the oscillator. I'm using a little uh, padding network or uh, an, a resistive L network consisting of a 1.5K and a 100 ohm non-inductive resistor uh, uh, to provide the input to the local oscillator of the mixer. Now part of the reason for that is to reduce the level down to about 5 dBm. This is a level 7 oscillator so, or mixer, so ordinarily if you wanted to get maximum performance out of it, you would drive it at 7 dBm. Uh, I'm driving it at about 5 dBm, and part of the reason is you don't really know what is going to wind up being hooked here. Now, if you're using this with the uh, analog discovery, we'll investigate this issue. But one of the problems, I had considered putting a low-pass filter on the output. But I'll only mention this. It's a whole field in itself. But most filters, just simple uh, L and Pi uh, LC uh, filters, pass their passband frequencies to the output, but they reflect back the rem all of the frequencies out of band. And reflecting a signal back into a mixer creates additional mixer components of uh, spurious responses, if you will. So it's pretty important that you try to terminate this in a pure 50 ohm load if you can. 
Now the uh, analog discovery has a 50 ohm input mode, so that will work there. Also by doing that, you have a switch that allows you to select either the converted output, in other words either the 80 or 40 megahertz down converted signal, or the direct input from the uh, uh, from the source. In any case, what you really want is something that uh, provides as close to a reflectionless load as possible. These just simply indicate the B and C connectors that are going to be the inside and the outside. And ultimately I'm going to be putting it in a little box like this and I'll be building the circuit on a small uh, board of that sort but uh, I don't know whether I'll show you the actual construction. Mainly what I would like to do now is take the prototype circuit which is on this little breadboard over here and hook it up to the analog discovery and see how it performs. Before we actually look at it on the analog discovery I thought it would be a good idea to take a look on a known good spectrum analyzer to see what the spectrum looks like. Now what I have on the screen is a 20 megahertz center frequency. It's displaying a, an AM modulated signal with a 1 megahertz modulating frequency but it's a square wave so in addition to the first sideband from the uh, the first that is the fundamental of the square wave. It'll also have the third, fifth, seventh, ninth, and so on harmonics. I did this so that we can get some idea of the uh, performance of the mixer circuit across a, a band of frequencies. So now what I'm going to do is look at the 100 megahertz signal. Now remember what we have is 100 megahertz AM modulated signal. We are using an 80 megahertz local oscillator to convert the 100 megahertz down to the difference frequency of 20 megahertz which is what we're looking at now. So now let's look at 100 megahertz and as you see the spectrum is essentially identical. Now let's look at the peak here on we're at about minus 22 dBm on the carrier. Now let's go back to the uh, 20 megahertz and do a peak search on that and you see we're showing about minus 26 dB which is very consistent. Remember that this mixer has about a 5 dB conversion loss. So uh, uh, 25 or 26 less 5 would be about 21 something. So we're actually getting better than the uh, specified conversion loss. In other words we're getting less than 5 dB of conversion loss in the mixer. So now let's hook it up to the analog discovery. And once again I'm using the analog discovery 2 here. I'm sure it would work fine with the analog discovery original as well. So uh, now let's take a look at the spectrum which you see here on the screen and at the center is 20 megahertz. Over here is 21 and of course this is 19 and then this will be 23 megahertz, 25, 27, 29, etc. In other words the fundamental, the third, fifth, seventh and so on, the odd harmonics. Since we're modulating with a square wave, if we zoom in on the carrier you will see I have the uh, cursor uh, or the mouse set to the 20 megahertz and you see it's reading about minus 33 uh, dB and so what we're basically showing here is that the analog discovery is perfectly capable of looking at these signals if you convert them down to a, a range within its uh, capability which of course is 0 to 50 megahertz. Now there are probably uh, other ways to do this that might 
work better uh, and so on. I was looking for a fairly inexpensive way to extend the frequency range of the analog discovery and it looks like this is going to work just fine. I'm now going to assemble this circuit in the uh, in the box that I showed earlier and take a look at its uh, final performance but at the present time I think I'm going to call uh, this video uh, finished. Hope you've enjoyed it uh, and perhaps you'll be inspired to uh, if you have an analog discovery to build a similar circuit and uh, let me know how uh, your experiments turned out. Have a nice day in the meantime and stay tuned for some future videos.